In the advanced totalitarian state, towing the party line is not enough. You have to become a zealot towards uh, whatever the party line happens to be. Uh, zealous in following the party's dis uh, dictates and zealous in your desire to hunt down and destroy uh, those who violate or uh, otherwise transgress the party line. Um, the classic case of that is, say, the French Revolution, where um, the people who were radical today, six months down the road, were considered reactionaries and were sent to the guillotine, even though they had actually kept the same position over that year-long period. What was acceptable became more and more radical. That's usually what happens in, uh, in totalitarian states, um, where there's endless purges and endless denunciations and show trials and things like that, public executions. Um, and not to make too odious a comparison, but in certain cases of, say, vegetarianism, um, it, it takes on that kind of dimensions, at least in a certain dynamic. For example, my diet uh, contains uh, bits of uh, flesh, bits of non-vegetarian stuff in it, although most of the time, most of my diet is vegetarian. It's just the type of food that I like to eat, however. Um, and, you know, there, I suppose there is some sort of ethical component to it. Do I actually need to eat this stuff, this meat? No, I don't. But it's not something that I get too worked up about. I eat the occasional hamburger, a bit of bacon, or something like that. Now, to some people, that's not enough. That's, um, a, uh, that's a transgression of the most basic rules of vegetarianism. You don't eat flesh at all. Okay, so then you get vegetarians who will remove all... Uh, flesh from their um, uh, from their menu, um, and uh, they might denounce people like me. Uh, they don't eat any meat whatsoever, n no fish, no poultry, no living organisms, but they might consume milk. But they're not eating anything that has flesh in it. They might denounce me. However, such people may in their turn be denounced by people who are vegans. Uh, they <coughs> Um, have removed all animal products from their menu completely and uh, generally attempt to buy things that are, can be proven to be as cruelty free as is humanly possible. Uh, these people will denounce the, uh, the say, the, ov the lacto vegetarians, rather, not oval, but lacto vegetarians. And um, I guess these people would be called militant vegans. I don't know what you'd call that. But <laughs> the problem is, of course, these people are open to be, to be denounced. Um, by, uh, say, um, uh, well, they can be denounced for the following reasons. How do you know that there's not microorganisms in there that you're eating uh, in your vegan product? Um, and uh, and how, do, how do you know that, uh, or what gives you the right to uh, eat something that, uh, that is living, that was at one point living? Do you have the right to kill it? Uh, we assume, we, we say that plant life is life. Uh, do we have the right to take it? Well, I have to eat that or else I die. Well, then you jolly well better just die. Otherwise, you're, uh, you're, you're being unethical. And there are people out there who do that. Um, within Hinduism and Jainism, uh, there is the self-starvation, uh, uh, the fasting to death, where people consciously opt to not eat anything until they die. Uh, and again, the, the system becomes more and more exacting, or rather the, the cycle of denunciation, or at least the cycle of judgmentalism, becomes more and more exacting as it refines itself. And again, you end up in the case of, uh, I suppose, suicidal antinatalism, or atrophied antinatalism, where um, just the very things that you have to do to keep yourself alive are a violation of other living things. Never mind sentience. Um, what right do I have to take anything's life? What right do I have to even pick an apple off a tree when the tree is not harmed? Eat that apple. What, by what moral right do I do, I do that? Well, the logic says that, well, that a tree is not the same thing as a human being. No, but a tree is not the same thing as uh, a block of granite either. It's living. It, we, we, we presume that that is life. It has the option of photosynthesizing it, what it eats, and it creates the things which I require to eat to stay alive. I'm not saying that vegetarianism is, is wrong. I, I, in fact, I'm 
largely a vegetarian myself due to food preference and the fact that I like to eat healthy. But let's not kid ourselves. Morality by denunciation always exposes you to a flank attack. There's always somebody out there who's going to become more militant than you are and call you a filthy sellout to the actual underlying philosophy of whatever it is that you've got. If you've decided to denounce people who are any less lax in their observations than you are of a particular point of view, then, of course, how are you going to protect yourself when they decide to denounce you for your laxity? There's always somebody who takes the whole issue a lot more seriously than you do. And, again, we go all the way up to um, uh, atrophied antinatalism. You just sit down, starve to death. Um, you th people think that that's absurd, but there are people on Earth who actually do that. It happens to this day. Um, I'm not saying, again, that there's anything wrong with being a vegetarian or whatever, but we've got to be careful in terms of judgmentalism. That always recoils upon itself. And if you ask me, um, making a moral call based on uh, hatred, anger, or denunciation isn't really all that moral to begin with. Um, it's You're more or less back at the Spanish Inquisition or the, the Salem Witch Trials using morality as a bludgeon as opposed to actually attempting to live a moral life. The two are not the same thing by any stretch. And if you ask me, the morbid sort of antinatalists are attempting to do exactly that every time they denounce everybody for being uh, whatever it is that they believe that these people are being. Um, denunciation isn't the way to go. Actually following something is the only way that you can actually uh, be moral. You can't make someone else's moral judgments for them, nor can you condemn them for them. You don't know what their reasons are for doing what they do, and you never will. So just get on with being as moral as you can, and don't worry about what the other guy or girl or whoever does. You don't know what their motives are. You can't know. It doesn't work like that. Thank you.